What's going on? We're back at some square body stuff. And uh, I want to take a minute, probably gonna be a short video, but I want to talk about something that I don't see often talked about when doing an LS swap in one of these. And this more applies to uh, somebody like me who uses the Holly Terminator for using a lot of the OEM stuff. Not such a big deal, but I want to talk about alternator wiring. So, factory, the uh, the wiring on this is not very big. The factory alternator wiring, you know, you figure it's designed for a 55 amp alternator, not, these are, I think this one's rated 105, um, but, and this can vary with, if you have a clutch fan set up, but both these fans draw about 40 to 50 amps to start, and I think consistently about 30. You have your fuel pump that's probably around 15 amps, and then you start adding your heater, your lights, and what other accessories you might have. This factory alternator wiring is not adequate size to uh, separate, I guess, distribute the power. So, this is this would be that goes to the starter it's on gms it goes from a little uh thing on the firewall it goes alternator to the starter and then to the battery it goes alternator to this thing this to the starter and then from the starter I believe up to the firewall or some or to the battery some way over complicated ordeal but um i actually had let's see if this thing will focus so that was just a splice i had it's melted it started to melt the fusible link um on that and then we come up here and same ordeal started to you know let the smoke out of it um, and I had just replaced these fusible links, but yeah, you really need to upgrade your wiring when it comes to doing this just on the safe side. So what I kind of up doing now, since I pulled everything out of the truck, I've actually went ahead and reused the factory battery cable that would run to the starter on that side which has the built-in fusible link in the, off the charging of the alternator. And then this, all I did was put a new end on it. This is the other end and came up here to a, they call it a mega fuse. Um, it's 175 amp. I'm gonna go to 150, but that's all they had currently. So I want to get this done. But what this does, if something, one of your battery cables pinch or get an accident and something shorts out, this fuse will pop and not destroy the rest of the wiring throughout the car. So it's a good safe thing to have. And then you're also upgrading the wire size for the higher amperage. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, cause what that wire goes to that's the starter on the other side. And then it's gonna reconnect to the positive uh, battery cable which will charge, end up charging the battery from off the starter, kind of like it did factory, but at much heavier gauge wire. So I'm gonna get this thinned out and uh, I'll give you guys a little update when I get uh, done with this whole setup. We'll make sure it's charging and then we'll call that safe and I'm not worried about this thing melting down because something's pulling too many amps. I'm gonna give you guys a little update where I'm at. So I'm gonna hook up the positive cable and the negative. So theore theor theoretically, I should have uh, volts at the mega plug there. So let's turn on the old voltmeter. So 
So touching that, that gives us almost 12 and a half volts. And you come off here to the hot side of the alternator, same thing. So in theory, the alternator will charge the battery through the uh, positive cable. So I'm gonna do this right now so we don't have any sparky sparkies. Then I'll kind of come over here. So I took out, this was the, start out with this uh, one here. This was the alternator from the alternator to that fuse block. And then this whole ordeal was that ran to the battery from the fuse block up here. Or from the starter, excuse me. Ran to the starter. So now I will only have, so we have H, one of these for the HVAC, the other is the 12 volts for the whole uh, fuse block for the truck. You got your alternator uh, plug. And this would have been just like a 12 volt constant. This is what would have ran your distributor. Uh, but this powers up my fuse block over there. Gives it the, the switch 12 volt. And then I still have to trim this down. But this will be the 12 volts to the small post on the solenoid. So that actually freed up and I re-wrapped it in some quarter inch and three eighths loom. Looks much, much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this kind of routed through and I'll show you guys the finish ordeal. All right, moment of truth here. So we got everything hooked back up. So I'm seeing batteries got 12 and a half volts in it. Um, Gonna fire it up and see what we get. Oh, did I leave the keys in the house? All right, so let me get the keys. All righty, so we got uh, the voltmeter hooked up. So currently, the battery has 12.54 volts. Um, so let's fire it up. We'll do a smoke test and see what we got for charging voltage. All right. So according to the Holly, at least the gauge, we have 14.5 volts. Over here, we're seeing the same thing. 14, it's climbing a little bit. So the alternator is charging from that cable to the battery. So we'll come up here off the post, alternator post. We got 14.67. And then off of the mega fuse, same voltage. So now we have no chance of, well, let's just say less chance of things catching fire from uh, improper voltage. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's turn on all the lights, any accessories we have. Um, this truck's LED for the most part, so it doesn't pull a whole lot fan it still says we're charging at 14.5 um i guess i'll have to see when i take it for a drive and the fans are actually on but let's talk about wire size so if you were gonna just kind of redo this um a little bit different than i did at least two gauge wire it, it would be my recommendation and then probably like a, a four gauge uh, fusible link for the alternator 
which I believe these are a four gauge and the, I think the wire, the factory wire is two gauge. I would do that at bare minimum and then do one of those fuses and then you could always do like a fuse block off that if you didn't want to do it the way I did it. Um, yeah. Um, so let me uh, get underneath the truck and I'll kind of show you where the chart. Just took a fall to the ground. So we'll come under here. So the factory cable, like I was saying, runs and that's what charges since, you know, they meet up here at starter and this sends the charge and you get the starter wire. Ugh. Ugh. Overall, uh, that's what I highly, highly recommend. Um, so you're not burning shit down because it doesn't take much to start an electrical fire. I mean, there's not much wiring in these, but it doesn't take much for this stuff to burn down. So, um, and if you, you can look up online wire size charts, you know, how much, how big a wire for how many feet or how many amps. There's all kinds of charts out there for that, but usually the OEM got it pretty well right. And then considering this, like this size wire and everything, there's not nearly as much electronics as say the Tahoe. You know, they have all the digital gauges, all the heater stuff, the rear heat, all this other gadgetry. So, yeah. So I think that's where we're gonna end this off. It was just kind of a quick little video. Um, I figured I would address this because I haven't seen much of this and this could be an issue for somebody. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, I'll put my email. If you guys have any questions about any of this or any of the stuff I've done, go ahead and shoot me an email and I will get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, otherwise, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I'll <coughs> see you guys later.